Hello, welcome to 2024. Happy New Year. So I'm glad to be back with a new video, a short, quick look at the Sortable Smart EQ version 4, which actually came out in December. But I was so busy, I couldn't get to it to show you this. So what is a Smart EQ? Pretty much it uses AI to help you to get a better mix or better sounding track. It can be uh, added to individual tracks or your entire mix. And what it does, it pretty much analyzes your audio and tells you, you know what, there are certain frequencies which could be better. They could be tweaked to make your mix more balanced and better sounding. And those uh, programs have sam been sampling thousands of CDs on tracks and data, I'm sure, manually tweaked. And uh, even in this one, there are a lot of categories from classical to rock. You can pull the, the graphs. So what it does, it gives you an idea how the audio would sound better if you apply those frequency curves. In the old days, you had to manually do this. You know, you pulled up your EQ, you played the audio. Let me turn on the analyzer. So you would add a frequency band, you know, less ba bass, more bass maybe. You know, maybe a little bit sparkly here and there. You know, you get the idea. You would add more and more bands to make your audio sound better. And this takes time, it's great fun, and you also need to know what you're doing because you can actually quickly overdo it and destroy your mix and things like that. So you wanna be really careful with EQ. So that's why the AI comes in. And let me reset this. So now, with those plugins, like this one, you just hit a button up here. This one is the Learn button, play back, and it will tell you what it thinks it should do with your audio. All right, here you have it. So based on all the data the software has stored, it thinks my mix seems to be pretty good out here, maybe a little little up here, uh, around 600. It needs a tiny boost, not that much. It's even here six, so it's around three dB. And then maybe it's too bright. So it also wants to pull it down around minus three in the six to seven K range, okay? So yeah, good, that's great. So when I play it back now, it's very subtle, but you hear the difference, right? The, the, the highs are less brittle, less bright. And you can also reverse this in this plugin, you can pull, this is your amount how much you want to, want to deal with those frequencies, right? You can overdo it. You can also, nothing happens here. You can get the other direction. Now I'm actually taking out some bass and adding highs. You know, let's, I show you how this sounds actually, just for fun. Wow. See, we lost a lot of bass. It sounds like a very cheap, uh, tiny speaker. Yeah, you don't want that. But you can see the idea that you can quickly smoothen out your final mix a little bit, right? With a smart EQ. Instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, uh, individual uh, uh, bands going. And um, you can actually control the smoothing also as well here. You can have it at zero, which means more detail, and you can have the curve fairly flat, you know, very easy. So it just takes it in a global approach, you know, very smooth. That's why it's called smoothing. You want a little bit of action, I think. And you can also make it adaptive, which means it's gonna listen to the frequencies. If they get too loud and too much in your face, it's gonna kick in more. So check this out. See a tiny bit. And the more I go up, 100, it's really reacting, right? Mostly every time the kick might hit and the snare, right? It 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 will trigger a, a response here. So that might be also too much. So you have to find your value, but you see the idea of it. It saves you time. Very quickly, you get nice results. So uh, this is very similar to the Smart EQ uh, 3. And uh, keep don't forget, this is also regular EQ. So you can, you know, if you want to turn this big one off, you can 
double click and add up to 24 different bands. And you can move them where you want to move them. And, and you can also make them all dynamic. So to have a little more control and, you know, down here, attack, release, ratio, all of that. The same thing what FabFilter does and all the other ones. So that's all great. So it sounds very good. And this is a, a beautiful regular EQ. The smart function works great on mixes. There's a lot of presets. If you know you do an R&B, uh, you know, a uh, record. This is like maybe a sample curve of most R&B records out there. And you can see which frequencies they kind of prefer and what to adjust. And then you run it with your audio and make the change. Now, one thing that a lot of users complained about with version 3 was the fact that the learning time of your audio was only six seconds and that's fairly short, especially if you have a longer bridge and you're adding elements and you want the entire thing being considered for the AI. So they changed this. And if you click on the cogwheel, on the global preferences, you can see the maximum learning time now, currently at six, can be increased to 60 seconds. So that's one minute of listening, which takes long, but you might need that for your song. So you have to, you know, you can set your own uh, listening time here, which I think is a wonderful uh, improvement. Also, there's a little switch, auto learn on startup. So if you insert the plugin into a track, the moment you open it and play back, it will start learning. So it saves you like one click. Okay, that's the idea. So that's uh, one of the great improvements here. Also, you can show the analyzer by default things like that, that makes just the workflow a little easier. Now, for me, the magic with this Smart EQ is the group mode. And for that, you need to pretty much have your stems. This was just a mix version, let me mute this. So I have the stems here of this little demo, organ, bass, two guitars and drums. Let me click on organ, I'm gonna open the plugin. You have to insert, by the way, the plugin on every single instance. Well, it's like Neutron from Isotope. Every instance, and then the plugin will talk. To the other plugins it's very nice so you open it and so i'm in the organ and i scanned already i learned my organ sound and for the organ it said you know yeah why don't you try a little here a little there so it's not that much but just leave this alone and um, what is different in the group mode if you go to manage the group mode you're gonna see all the elements and in the old version there were only six tracks available. Now you can add up to 10 instances. That's quite a lot. So if you have a lot of stems, including multiple, uh, you know, kick drum, uh, multiple drum stems with kick and hi-hat and snare and stuff, you can add up to 10 on this side, which I think is amazing. Also, you can now see the cue immediately. So if I click, you say organ is selected because I pulled it from the organ audio track. If I click drums, it will be on the lower window. So now I can actually see my current a drum EQ, right? What I, the drum, uh, you know, curve suggested or the bass curve. And you can uh, bypass, of course, and, and get rid of the group again. But what it does now, two things. Each track individually will be shaped according to the, uh, you know, suggested uh, curve and to your settings. Also, it will compare all one, two, three, four, five tracks and look at some masking issues. So if you have the same frequency in the same range, let's say between bass and the kick drum or uh, organ, low organ and uh, the bass, if something clashes, what's more important? What do you want to hear? You want, you know, get rid of that mud in your mix, right? Clear that up a little bit. And this is called unmasking. And this plugin does it pretty much for you. So what you have to make, you have to do, make sure that all the plugins are in either the group mode or the track mode. So I let's move them all back to uh, track mode. And I will tell you about this little improvement also, which I find uh, amazing that wasn't there before. Okay, so now I have all my stems in green, which is track and group. So when I play back, Let's go to zero. Zero means nothing. It will shape each individual track to make this make it sounding better. And also it will compare the tracks 
and adjust you know any masking reductions to make it more transparent and I have to bring this up to at least 100 maybe Sure, that is a lot. So now you ask, how does it know which instrument is more important, right? I mean, which frequency do you want to cut? The kick drum, low or the low bass, right? So that depends on your taste and your style of music. But that's how it's being solved in this program. There is a There are three lanes, front, middle, and back. And you kind of decide what you want up front, that would be maybe your vocalist, solo instrument. Uh, the middle range would be maybe even everything, the drums, the organ. If I pull the organ back, now I only have two layers. So the guitars are kind of more featured. They don't get cut really with the masking. So the, the AI will look at the bass, the organ and the drums to take care of the masking, right? And if I pull the guitar back in, for instance, let's get the guitar over here. Let's get the organ up. So now it's not, it's treating the organ as like the soloist almost, right? It's not like a mix, but it tells the AI which frequencies you want to attenuate most and the ones of course on the back track will be the ones that will be heavily you know modified to avoid the masking right so you can actually you can see you can pull even the drums if i want the drums all the way back So you could actually hear how it shaped the drums now dramatically, right? If it's a shape, or it pulled out to make room for the other instruments. So you need to play with that. And you can also do it in the main view. You can, you know, we have the analyzer, which runs. You see all the instruments. And see up here, front organ, I say, you know what? Let's move the organ back here. So that's very nice. And of course, the other big improvement is that button under mode. Now you have the option of telling each plugin, you know, there are five, keep in mind, five plugins for each audio lane, right? You can tell the plugin what to do. You can either ad address the track only. So it only will do the processing of the suggested curve, but no masking. Second mode, group mode, will bypass your EQing, but it will look for masking only, which is interesting. And the last version is the track and group, so it does both. I want to show you what happens if I switch everything to group. So let's say you have a mix you've done and you love your IQ settings, you have used other IQs, you don't want to mess with the IQ in here, but you want to address the masking, right? So you're going to switch, that's all you have to do. Leave, just insert this plugin at the very end, at the last stage of your track, after, you know, whatever compressor, all kinds of things, whatever you want to do, and then switch it to the red. You see, they all show up in red, right? That, that can, you can check. Now we have it strictly in masking mode. So the curve will not, you know, modify um, your individual tracks. So it's only going to listen to the mix. And the masking, as I said, changes depending on the order of masking, right? So, but it's, again, it's very subtle and that ha is how it should be. If it's dramatic and you hear some weird changes, that means you've got to go back to your mix 
and, and start there. This should be subtle, but it's cleaning up your track. That's the idea. So I think this is wonderful. 10 instances actually now with this version four. And um, you can learn all tracks at once. So if I reset this and you click the learn all, it will scan every individual track again and give you the suggested curves. You can scale, of course, the window to your liking. And you can switch. You can run those in mixed mode too. You can say, you know what? I want my organ on on uh, a track and groove. I don't at the drums. I don't want the masking on the drums. I'm gonna go just to track only, right? And you can hear how that sounds when you play back. So whatever. So there are many options. Whatever you like best. But it's gonna clear up your mix and your individual stems as well. So I think it's definitely a great improvement. Uh, if you are a soundable owner of a previous product, uh, check the website before you buy EQ4 because they give you discounts. I only own the smart compressor and I went online, logged in, and then I looked up the EQ4 and it, they took out another $25, I think. So I got it for a very good introductory price. So I'm looking forward to using it in this coming year on some new projects and see what it does. And I hope you enjoyed this short video. There are more videos out there explaining more detail. But as you can see, a lot of controls, a lot of options, um, a beautiful plugin with many things uh, to experiment with. And also it's a fairly easy interface to use. So here you have it, Sonable's Smart EQ4. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year.